Penguin Random House Audio presents Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Read for you by Nicole Lewis. We definitely wait for birthdays, or even an ice cream, like my daughter has to earn it. Yesterday we promised her an ice cream, but then she behaved horribly, and I said, Then I'm sorry, ice cream is for girls who behave. And that's not you today. Maybe tomorrow. Rachel Sherman, Uneasy Street, The Anxieties of Affluence. Part One One That night, when Mrs. Chamberlain called, Emira could only piece together the words, Take Briar somewhere, and Pay you double. In a crowded apartment, and across from someone screaming, That's my song! Amira stood next to her girlfriends, Zara, Josepha, and Shawnee. It was a Saturday night in September, and there was a little over an hour left of Shawnee's 26th birthday. Amira turned the volume up on her phone and asked Mrs. Chamberlain to say it again. Is there any way you can take Briar to the grocery store for a bit? Mrs. Chamberlain said. I'm so sorry to call. I know it's late. It was almost astonishing that Amira's daily babysitting job, a place of pricey onesies, colorful stacking toys, baby wipes, and section dinner plates, could interrupt her current nighttime state. Loud music, bodycon dresses, lip liner, and red solo cups. But here was Mrs. Chamberlain at 10.51 p.m. waiting for Amira to say yes. Under the veil of two strong mixed drinks, the intersection of these spaces almost seemed funny. But what wasn't funny was Amira's current bank balance, a total of $79.16. After a night of $20 entrees, birthday shots, and collective gifts for the birthday girl, Amira Tucker could really use the cash. Hang on, she said. She set her drink down on a low coffee table and stuck her middle finger into her other ear. You want me to take Briar right now? On the other side of the table, Shawnee placed her head on Josepha's shoulder and slurred. Does this mean I'm old now? Is 26 old? Josepha pushed her off and said, Shawnee, don't start. Next to Amira, Zara untwisted her bra strap. She made a disgusted face in Amira's direction and mouthed, Ew, is that your boss? Peter accidentally, we had an incident with a broken window and I just need to get Briar out of the house. Mrs. Chamberlain's voice was calm and strangely articulate, as if she were delivering a baby and saying, Okay, Mom, it's time to push. I'm so sorry to call you this late, she said. I just don't want her to see the police. Oh, wow. Okay, but Mrs. Chamberlain? Amira sat down at the edge of a couch. Two girls started dancing on the other side of the armrest. The front door of Shawnee's apartment opened to Amira's left, and four guys came in yelling, Hey! Jesus, Zara said. All these niggas trying to stunt. I don't exactly look like a babysitter right now, Amira warned. I'm at a friend's birthday. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. You should stay. No, no, it's not like that, Amira said louder. I can leave. I'm just letting you know that I'm in heels and I've, like, had a drink or two. Is that okay? Baby Catherine, the youngest Chamberlain at five months old, wailed in the receiver. Mrs. Chamberlain said, Peter, can you please take her? And then, up close, Amira, I don't care what you look like. I'll pay for your cab here and your cab home. Amira slipped her phone into the pouch of her crossbody bag, making sure all of her other belongings were present. When she stood and relayed the news of her early departure to her girlfriends, 
Josepha said. You're leaving to babysit? Are you fucking kidding me? Guys, listen, no one needs to babysit me, Shawnee informed the group. One of her eyes was open, and the other was trying very hard to match. Josepha wasn't through asking questions. What kind of mom asks you to babysit this late? Amira didn't feel like getting into specifics. I need the cash, she said. She knew it was highly unlikely, but she added, I'll come back if I get done, though. Zara nudged her and said, I'm a roll with you. Amira thought, oh, thank God. Out loud, she said, okay, cool. The two girls finished their drinks in one long tip as Josepha crossed her arms. I can't believe you guys are leaving Shawnee's birthday right now. Amira lifted her shoulders and quickly dropped them back down. I think Shawnee is leaving Shawnee's birthday right now, she said, as Shawnee crawled down to the floor and announced she was taking a quick nap. Amira and Zara took to the stairs. As they waited outside for an Uber on a dimly lit sidewalk, Amira did the math in her head. Sixteen times two plus cab money. Fuck yes. Catherine was still crying from inside the Chamberlain house when Amira and Zara arrived. As Amira walked up the porch stairs, she spotted a small jagged hole in the front window that dripped with something transparent and slimy. At the top of the landing... Mrs. Chamberlain pulled Briar's glossy blonde hair into a ponytail. She thanked Amira, greeted Zara the exact same way she always did. Hi, Zara, nice to see you again. And then said to Briar, you get to hang out with the big girls. Briar took Amira's hand. It was bedtime, she said, and now it's not. They stepped down the stairs and as the three girls walked the three short blocks to Market Depot, Briar repeatedly complimented Zara's shoes, an obvious but unsuccessful ploy to try them on. Market Depot sold bone broths, truffle butters, smoothies from a station that was currently dark, and several types of nuts in bulk. The store was bright and empty, and the only open checkout lane was the one for ten items or fewer. Next to a dried fruit section, Zara bent in her heels and held her dress down to retrieve a box of yogurt-covered raisins. Um, eight dollars? She quickly placed them back on the shelf and stood up. God damn, this is a rich people grocery store. Well, Amira mouthed with the toddler in her arms, this is a rich people baby. I want this. Briar reached out with both hands for the copper-colored hoops that hung in Zara's ears. Amira inched closer. How do you ask? Peas. I want this now, Mira, peas. Zara's mouth dropped open. Why is her voice always so raspy and cute? Move your braids. Amira said. I don't want her to yank them. Zara tossed her long braids. A dozen of them were a whitish blonde over one shoulder and held her earring out to Briar. Next weekend, I'ma get twists from that girl my cousin knows. Hi, Miss Briar. You can touch. Zara's phone buzzed. She pulled it out of her bag and started typing, leaning into Briar's little tugs. Amira asked, are they all still there? Ha! Zara tipped her head back. Shawnee just threw up in a plant and Josepha is pissed. How long do you have to stay? I don't know. Amira set Briar back on the ground. But homegirl can look at the nuts for hours, so it's whatever. Mira's making money. Mira's making money. Zara danced her way into the frozen food aisle. Amira and Briar walked behind her as she put her hands on her knees and bounced in the faint reflection in the freezer doors, pastel ice cream logos mirrored on her thighs. Her phone buzzed again. <laughs>